This is St Andrew's Methodist Church in Filton in Bristol. My name's Tim Smart and inside I'm going to meet some very special people. I'm Dr Pauline Emmett, I'm a member of this church and I was in charge of the refurbishment project. Refurbishment? Yes, yeah, so the church is now 60 years old. It was built at a time when this area was expanding. So a lot of people were moving into yes, the area. Yes, that's right. It was the aircraft industry which is uh, developing very much in this area at the time and we needed a new church. How, how was it funded? In fact, the funding for this church was a result of the bombing of the centre of Bristol during the Second World War. Uh, the old King Street Methodist Church was bombed and needed demolishing. And because of that, they, the compensation, was de they decided to build the church out here in Filton because this is where the new population was living. Oh. So that funding was vitally important for this church. Yes, absolutely, was what paid for all of it. that we had. So it had underfloor heating, beautiful wood and lovely wooden furniture. Um, the church was opened in 1958 with a big ceremony. When my husband and I first came, which was 1972, there was a huge congregation every, every, every service, about 250 people. So it was very well used at that time and we brought up our children here and we, ha we used to run a pantomime every year as well. But now, time has moved on and so refurbishment was necessary. Well, in, in uh, 2016, we had, the heating wasn't working. We had, uh, we had to have be completely rewired for safety reasons. We were only using the church for a couple of hours a week because it was only suitable for Sunday services um, with the huge pews that were here. And the congregation got together and decided we wanted to bring it into the 21st century. So at that point you decided it needed refurbishing? That's right. So how did you go about that? Well, we involved an architect. Come and have a look at these plans oh. over here. Yeah. So you can see from this that the, this is the size of the church as was, and the, si the church is the same size still. Um, but you can also see that there are pillars. So when we were replanning the church, we had to keep within those pillars because they're structural, or the ceiling would fall down, roof would fall down. Mm. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do was make a, an, an area at the front, this bit, that we could use for all sorts of different activities, not just, just church services. So we got rid of the pews for a start, and then we built a wall across to make this area at the back useful for other things like storage area and uh, a kitchen and, and um, coffee bar and then the middle bit for a gathering area where we could have meetings or just talk to each other. Um, but it was all within the original size of the church. Where did you get the money from? Firstly, by selling part of the building which was underused to network counselling. That's a Christian organisation which helps people who need talking therapies they took over their part of the building in 2018 and were able to build new counselling rooms on an open part of the land and convert the rest of the building to teaching rooms and offices. They're very happy with their new home. And did you raise some of the money yourself? Were yes, you we had yeah. quizzes mm -hmm. and um, coffee mornings and gift days and um, he even had a sponsored cycle ride. <laughs> And also we had lots of junk that was left in the church and we had to get rid of. So we had sales and uh, gave some to charity and we also had to, I'm afraid, 
dump some of it. So how did you raise the rest of the money? Well, we started writing grant applications, um, lots of them. Uh, there are charities that fund this sort of work, so including the Methodist Church, and they, they were very good and did give us quite a bit of the funds. Uh -huh. We were recommended to apply to the Ennevert Community Trust, which distributes the Landfill Communities Fund. They gave us £25,000 towards the accessible facilities. So we'd already been talking to George the architect uh, for quite a while and he had got three tenders from builders um, but we hadn't actually decided um, which builder to have when lockdown happened in mm. March 2020. Mm. So luckily we were able to talk online and on the telephone and we did actually make the decision gradually. Um, and so when lockdown became released a bit, we decided that we would meet up and we eventually got the contract signed in February 2021. So now I'd like to introduce you to our architect. Tim, this is George Perris. Good morning. Hello, George. How did the refurbishment of this church compare with others that you've done? Very similar, actually, in that there's always unexpected challenges to get over as you work through the construction process. So how did you go about reducing the cost to match the budget? We had three areas we needed to reduce the costs on. So we worked with Pauline, Simon, the minister, and our contractor, KP Wilton, to reduce the cost of those areas, one of which was the, the toilets. We went from a dual sex toilet to a unisex, which gave us more space, less cubicles, worked much better. The other area was the choir. We retained the choir as is, rather than removing it, which was extensive work. We also didn't install a lift which was planned for that area and mainly the third area which we did a lot of work with the contractor on was we removed the proposed ceiling to the ancillary rooms. In hindsight everyone agrees it's a much better solution in that there's a great deal more light in that area um, and those three areas all provided us with the cost cutting that we required. So I understand that this is the original floor. Yes, very much so, and a fantastic, fantastic parquet floor it is. The retention of the floor was a conversation I had with Pauline, Simon, and the various other church bodies from very day one, whether we could retain it or not. Ultimately, buildings like this were built at the time with a lot of asbestos. We knew there was asbestos here. However, we came across a lot more asbestos than we ever thought we would. And that was part of a conversation that ultimately resulted in us retaining this floor, much to everyone's delight. Now, part of that meant where do we put the electrics? That resulted us in actually us reutilising a catwalk in the original ceiling um, to reroute all the electrics through. So part of the original construction has been utilised by this refurbishment, which is quite a nice feature to say, well, yes, we've reused part of the original. So I understand that you used the cherry picker to reach up into the ceiling and that also formed part of the way that you reduce the cost to hit the budget instead of using scaffolding. Yes, that was very much a conversation in that taking down the original ceiling was a huge effort as you can imagine to a space of this size. The original conversation was we need to fill the entire space with scaffold. The significant cost that has was a discussion again where how do we remove that cost and the answer was whilst it will take you longer and there's a delay to the project in its time scale we can do that with a cherry picker and mobile scaffold and that's what we utilized to essentially build the new ceiling and put in all the acoustic tiles that are up there and above those acoustic tiles there's a significant amount of insulation which again was part of the original brief we had from the church in that they needed to reduce their energy costs of this space so yeah there's a lot of insulation up there so how did you protect the floor when you're running a cherry picker all over it that's a very good question yes you couldn't run a cherry picker around on here we ended up with multiple sheets of plywood and other protective materials over the areas where they were working um, and it was actually quite comedy in a way to watch them move that cherry picker because it's a bit like a game of Tetris where they were moving sheets of ply to then wheel this machine around on. So yes, and that's why it was then protected. Mm. So one of the key features of the scheme was the large wall that separates two spaces. 
from the main worship space to the ancillary area at the front of the church. The timber and glass glazed screen that we installed to the base of this provides both visual and clear separation to the two areas, allowing for so that's that easy separation and also inclusion of the both areas together. The removal of the proposed ceiling spaces allows the light from the large original feature windows to add to this space. This space in itself is very much designed to allow for people to mingle as they come in and out of either a function or church services and provides for quite a fabulous interval space. So as part of the subdivision of the ancillary area, this was the kitchen coffee area that we created. We retained the rather fantastic original aluminium glazing, which full height gives the most amazing amount of light in the space. So this all looks really nice and open and practical. Has it always been like that? No, it, the stage has been significantly extended. It's probably doubled in size actually. Uh, as part of that works, we've also installed the, the ramp to the side to give easy access to all users of the stage on and off. The additional space, as you can see, it's far more suits the, uh, the furniture that is installed. Well, thank you very much indeed, George. Thank it's you. been great to meet you and uh, thank you for your help. Thank you, pleasure. Ah, Pauline, I gather there, there was some really beautiful wood in the original church. Yes, well, you've already had a look with George at the uh, parquet floor, which is very lovely, isn't it? But we also had this font and this lectern and the communion table and the cross. And all of those were made at the time the church was built from, by the aircraft apprentices. And it's been here and we've kept this part of the church looking very much the same as it always did. But we do have a new lectern as well and this was made from one of the old pews and uh, is made to match the old lectern exactly and i gather that that new cross hanging over the entrance was also made from one of the old pews yes um it was bit made by one of our friends and it's looking very lovely yes back there. mike Goldsworthy. yeah nice and now you have this swanky new audio visual system Yes, we, we needed to um, have a, a new system to communicate with our congregation and for people to use, um, including microphones, and, and, it, and it also can be worked from the computer at the back. And that is in complete contrast to that organ. Yes, the organ uh, was built in the church in the, in the beginning, but it was an older organ that was installed in the church, and it's a full pipe organ and plays very nicely. Finally, I'd like to introduce you to our minister, Tim. This is the Reverend Simon Edwards. Hello, Simon. So how do you think it's gone? We're delighted. We're delighted in what we have compared to what we used to have. It's much lighter and brighter and a much more usable space. Uh, and it means that we can open up our premises for all kinds of community uses. So we're really pleased. Uh, we're grateful to all of our volunteers who've taken part, who've shared and have given their effort and worked hard. We're grateful for George, our architect, and for our builders. And of course, what we have now is wonderful, uh, and being able to open it up for lots of people is wonderful.
unacceptable. It's unsafe. No, it isn't. It's the work of a genius. Oh, me. <laughs> Uh, Dave, camera's running. Right. Camera rolling. Camera rolling. Dave rolling. Hold on. We're all yeah. rolling. Rolling. And action. With me now is heritage campaigner Henrietta Barlow, an environmentalist, Jane Meadows. And everyone will see it that simply, Bill. But we need more houses, more housing estates. Let's move on. But think about the homeless. Cut. church. Strengthen our witness and make us one in Christ. Prayer for thy kingdom come. 